Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back. I am so glad to see all of you guys, and with a start like that, I know it's going to be a great year. There is something special about the first days back of school that only we as educators truly understand. We're, we're in a club of sorts. We have a beginning of the year, we have an end of the year, and a renewal every single year. And what a great feeling for me and for all of us to be back together today. I've got, we've got a lot of people that we would like to meet and greet and introduce and congratulate. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, first, I want to take it just a second um, to thank our school-affiliated organizations and our sponsors. Their sponsorship, the SAOs, covered our delicious breakfast today, provided for us by the talented FCCPS food services staff of Richard and Cindy and everyone else. So Richard and Cindy, would you stand up, and the food services team, would you stand up? I have to tell you, as I walked in the building this morning, um, I, I'm a little bit nervous about today. And I'm nervous about today because, I, like you, you know, it's the start of the year and I always get a little nervous when I get started. Um, but as I walked in the building and the smell of bacon wafted down the hallway, I thought, all right, everything's going to be fine. <laughs> We're going to be all right. So as I introduce our organizations today and the leaders of the organizations, I'd like for them to please stand up and wave. Um, and they're all sitting sort of in the front area. So the SAO leaders, um, if you wouldn't mind standing up and, and being recognized. And the first is the Falls Church Education Foundation and their executive director, Debbie Hiscott, and President Cecily Shea. Thank you. We'd like to welcome from the Falls Church Elementary PTA, Kathleen Tice. <laughs> the George Mason Athletic Boosters, President Becky Creed. <laughs> Mary Ellen Henderson Middle School's PTA President, uh, Vice President Robin Borum and Vicki Ehrlich, who are doing double duty today as the PTA and staff. Thank you for being here. And George Mason High School's PTA president, Allie Lapp. Allie, where are you? And our Falls Church Band Boosters president, Ari Otter. Ari. We are so lucky to have such dedicated members of these groups in our school community harnessing the power and the generosity of volunteers and volunteerism. So thank you again for all of your support. We've got one new key leader this year uh, I'd like to recognize and for all of you to meet. William Bates is our new Assistant Superintendent and Chief Academic Officer. William comes to us from Baltimore County and Fairfax, and he's looking forward to working in our small school division. Um, so I'd like to, at this moment in time, welcome up William Bates to the podium to say good morning. William, come on up. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm excited and energized to join the best small school system, and actually, let me change that, the best IB school system in the country. Over the, over the past few weeks, I've had an opportunity to engage in numerous conversations with many of you, and I am fully confident that I am in the right place at the right time, preparing to engage in the right work, which is ensuring that all of our students experience high levels of success. The most recent data shows that it, for the first time in four years, FCPS students have scored above 90% in the five tested categories. Additionally, we have a graduation rate of 100%. I think that deserves a round of applause. You see, this could not be accomplished without the hard work and dedication of committed teachers, professional school counselors, school-based administrators, and support staff and central office personnel. So thank you for all that you do 
and here's to a wonderful school year. Thank you. All right, before we go on, there is one other person I want to recognize today, um, and he doesn't know that I'm going to recognize him, but today is the start of the school year for teachers, and in many ways, it's an opportunity for us to come back and to think about what does the future of FCCPS uh, look like. And so today, joining us, um, we have a student who is going to be a brand new kindergartner at Mount Daniel this year, and Teddy Gill. Teddy, would you stand up just for a second? Teddy. Oh, Nan Hoff, we love you. <laughs> we are excited to see Teddy here uh, to celebrate with you as you come back. Every summer, our custodial team and maintenance staff work to refresh our buildings. And you'll notice some upgrades and updates. As always, the floors in the building are shined to perfection. And you might even see your own reflection in the floors this week but for a very short time because the kids will be back, but they, look, but they look awesome. The big story though this summer is all of the moves that took place, and it was really a summer shuffle for us. Raise your hand if your classroom, office, or desk is in a different place than it was when you left. Right, so that is a lot of hands. So in June, we undertook some massive moves and lots and lots of yellow crates. About half of our staff changed places, and that means that some of you unpacked earlier this summer, and some of you are actually unpacking your classrooms this week. The first step in the long-awaited second grade move <laughs> from TJ to Mount Daniel. Then we moved half of our classrooms around inside of TJ as well. The fifth grade classrooms all came into the building from the trailer. We moved a lot of the Henderson classrooms to make way for the biggest class ever arriving in the sixth grade. I know, TJ, you're disappointed to see them move on, but we, we are happy to take them at Henderson. And we moved central office to its new location. And the very last move was putting transportation's office at GMHS. Our maintenance team this summer in particular deserves a big round of applause for all that moving and everyone who went into the packing and unpacking. So thank you all very, very much. So the result of all of that moving and construction is for the first time in 20 years, we won't have any staff or any students in portable classrooms. I've worked in a lot of school divisions in my life, and I have to say I've never been able to say that. So it really is um, quite special, and I hope that that's sinking in. At George Mason High School, we've got four classrooms set up as demonstration sites for our future furniture possibilities in the new school. And I invite you to stop by and check in on those at some point over the course of the year. It's very exciting. On the last day of school, we also held a groundbreaking for the new George Mason High School, and it was a perfect day. A little windy, but perfect. Since then, the Gilbane construction team has been hard at work. They've removed 5,000 truckloads of dirt and started to pour a concrete foundation. As they built the path to the field to enlarge the rear parking lots, they continued their charge. This year, the change that you will see is dramatic. And at this time next year, uh, in the fall, that building will nearly be done. If you want to follow along in real time, last week, Sevi Badia, uh, set up live cameras so anyone can watch the progress at any time. So this is a live feed of what's happening. I just want to make sure they're working out there. <laughs> Savvy, I don't see much action. Can we? <laughs> anyway, I have this, uh, I, I will be honest, I'm, I'm not embarrassed by it, um, but it's like my screensaver is the construction cam. So I, anytime I'm sitting at my desk, I can, it also has audio, so you can hear the cranes moving back and forth, and some of the conversations you hear might be interesting as well. Um, 
We do have another guest in the audience that I want to just thank uh, for being a great partner. So this project of the George Mason High School is uh, certainly a school project, but it couldn't be done without the support of the general government and uh, the staff in the general government. And I want to thank Wyatt Shields for his partnership. Wyatt is here today. Where are you, Wyatt? Wyatt Shields, thank you so much. Wyatt's our city manager if you haven't had a chance to meet him before, and he has really been an awesome partner in all of this. And here's a reminder of what the high school is going to look like when it's done, just as a reminder, to keep that in, in front of you at all times. I want to flip back to the groundbreaking picture because the person right in the center of that picture is Lisa High. And Lisa, where are you today? There she is. Lisa. Lisa is getting super comfortable wearing that construction helmet. Um, over, uh, over the summer, Lisa stepped into a new role here in FCCPS as the Assistant Superintendent for Special Projects, ensuring that the foundation of the high school is as strong as the concrete that it sits on. Lisa's been in every single George Mason High School classroom and closet this summer, uh, cataloging everything that we have and will need and what will go into the new school and what will not, because not everything is going to go over to the new school. She's working closely with the academic and construction teams to make sure that the school we build is exactly what we want and what we need for our future and for our students. So Lisa, thank you for your work. Also new this summer is a new employee assistance provider, and there are so many services available to our employees here in the City of Falls Church Schools, uh, and this is just another in the swath of those that are available. But we'd like to invite Beth Gilley um, from Lytle to give a sneak peek of what is available to you. So Beth, welcome, and we're glad you're here. Thank you, and I'm so honored to be here the City of Falls Church Public School System has such a wonderful reputation that um, I feel honored to be even working with you. You know, you guys are like the gold standard. Um, so what I wanted to do, I have two minutes to tell you about the new Employee Assistance Program, so I'll be really quick. As you all know, an Employee Assistance Program is about total well-being and about supporting employees in the organization for total well-being. So the EAP provides counseling services for employees and family members up to eight sessions per employee per problem per year for a wide variety of kinds of things that may impact you throughout uh, the school year and beyond. Um, you know, life happens and we all run into challenges from time to time. So that's what, here, what we're here for is to support you through those challenges so you can be your best at school. So in addition to the counseling services, we also provide legal and financial consultation. And we've added a lot of new services with an app, a new app to come with a new work life website to come, uh, knock on wood, by the end of September. Um, we're kind of in that building process, much like your high school building. Um, and you know how software development is. It's always a little bit later than you want it to be. Um, so um, in addition to the new app and the new work life website, other things that are currently available in addition to what we have in counseling services is life coaching. Uh, we have personal concierge. We have medical advocacy. Uh, and the medical advocacy, just to give you a short clip, is really to support and help you through any of those medical issues. It can be a complicated system. So any questions from claims to complicated medical diagnoses, anything like that. So we've got the medical 